Starlink is no longer offering a free pause feature for their roam and priority service plans. You may have seen an email recently if you're subscribed to one of those plans, letting you know about the change to the pause feature. And also with some scary language, honestly, that basically said you have to turn on this new standby mode or we will cancel your service plans. And that obviously has created a lot of confusion and questions. So I thought I'd make this video talking about this new standby mode, what it means for you, how it impacts you, a way to kind of get around it and answering some other questions. So let's jump right into it. So if you're like me and you like to take your Starlink with you for camping trips and things like that, you may have a specific dish that you only use for your roam service plan. And you probably keep it paused most of the year. After all, you don't want to be billed month after month after month if it's just sitting on a shelf collecting dust. So the previous pause feature allowed you to turn off billing. You didn't have an internet access, but you didn't need it since you weren't using your dish. Now, whenever you wanted to go on a trip, you could unpause in the Starlink app and you would have internet access basically immediately. Well, that pause feature is going away. You can no longer do that. You don't even find that option anywhere in the Starlink app or on the website anymore. The pause feature, which was previously free, is now being replaced by something called standby mode. Standby mode costs $5 a month and it's a lot different than the previous pause feature. Standby mode is basically another service plan. And the biggest difference between standby mode and the previous pause feature was that standby mode actually includes unlimited low speed data. Starlink is capping the speed, both upload and download speeds of this standby mode feature to 500 kilobits per second. That's half of a megabit per second. So that's just enough to do some light web browsing, check your email or do Wi-Fi calling and texting but it wouldn't be enough to do things like streaming, Netflix, or YouTube, maybe even video conferencing. Anything data intensive that requires a lot of data is not really gonna be compatible with this new standby mode. Another big difference with standby mode versus the previous pause feature is that now residential customers have access to standby mode. So previously, residential subscribers could not pause their service plan. But now, you may have seen the email from Starlink, you can actually use standby mode with residential. And just a, an example of how that would be useful. Let's say you have a vacation cabin and you only, you're only there for a few months out of the year and you have residential service at that cabin. Well now, instead of canceling and having to reactivate your residential plan multiple times per year, now you can just turn on standby mode, which takes your rate, your monthly rate from maybe $120 a month to $5 a month and you still maintain internet access at that property with unlimited low speed data. And that's useful for being able to check in on smart home devices, maybe like a smart thermostat or a security system, uh, a, re a remote door lock, things like that. So there definitely are some benefits for this, even for residential, but it's important to note that Starlink specifically says that standby mode will not save your spot if your area becomes sold out or waitlisted. But they do say that it can help you avoid that demand surcharge that we've seen. Uh, that demand surcharge can be up to a thousand dollars in some really highly congested areas. So Starlink says that if you do turn on standby mode and your area becomes subject to that demand surcharge, uh, that won't apply to you when you go to reactivate your residential plan. So like I'd mentioned before, standby mode is basically another service plan and it actually uses Roam data. And with that, it brings all of the features of Roam with it. So you can use standby mode in motion if you need to. So if you have a Starlink mounted on top of your RV or your vehicle and you wanna use the standby mode until you get to your campsite or something, you can continue to use standby mode, unlimited internet access to do things like maps, navigation, maybe even some music streaming. But again, that speed, the maximum performance is gonna be throttled to a half of a megabit per second. And with that roam data and standby mode, that also means you can travel with it. You can use it, Starlink says, anywhere with active coverage. To manage standby mode, to turn it off, to disable it, you can do that from the Starlink app or on the website account dashboard. If you go into the app, you can click on your subscriptions, click manage, and then you'll find options to change your service plan or to enable standby mode. Now, one big change from all of this is that Starlink has actually eliminated the Roam 10 gigabyte plan. So if you were previously subscribed to Roam 10 gig, you will no longer be able to reactivate or activate new service on that plan. It's just completely gone. If you're like me and you're actively subscribed to a Roam 10 gigabyte plan, 
you'll be able to maintain it as long as you don't cancel it or switch to another service plan. And this is kind of confusing to me, puzzling to me, why they would eliminate this popular Roam 10 gig plan, especially since when they introduced that, that plan, specifically with the mini, it was a super popular option for sporadic travelers, you know, like weekend warriors, and even home backup internet users that wanted the mini and a very cheap $10 a month plan to be able to use just for light data and backup situations or maybe traveling for a weekend or something. So that Rome 10 gig plan is gone. If you had your plan paused or canceled, you'll no longer be able to activate that again. You're gonna be forced to use a uh, Rome 50 gig, which is now the cheapest Rome plan. So with all of the changes that I've mentioned so far with the elimination of the free pause feature, as you can imagine, opinions on this have been mixed within the Starlink community. And I can see both sides because there are pros and cons of this change. Now, the most obvious pro is that now you have the cheapest, basically the cheapest service plan that Starlink offers, which is standby mode, which does give you unlimited data, even though it is throttled down super slow. That's gonna be great for a lot of you that only need Starlink as like a backup home internet solution. So imagine you have a Starlink dish installed on your roof as a backup to your primary internet connection. You can now use this standby mode and pay just $5 a month and you'll continue to have internet service. Let's say your primary internet goes out, you can use this standby mode to do things like light web browsing, make phone calls over Wi-Fi calling and texting. And if you need to, if you need higher speed data, you can always just upgrade to a roam or residential service plan and have access to high speed Starlink data immediately. So this standby mode is a great option for uses like that. It's not a great option though, if you're the type of person that your Starlink is just gonna sit on a shelf most of the year and you only travel with it, you know, maybe a handful of times. And you're trying to keep that as low as, low as cost as possible while you're not actually using Starlink. So a lot of people in that situation are just kind of looking at this like Starlink being greedy and just wanting more monthly income even if you're not using your Starlink dish. But on that note, you can still actually pause your Starlink dish for free if you want to. There is kind of a workaround. So if you have a roam plan and you're only gonna use it a few times a year, what you can do now is just cancel your service plan. Cancel your roam service plan and then reactivate later when you actually need it. That essentially does the same thing as the old pause feature, just a few extra steps in the Starlink app or on the website. Now, if you're gonna go that route, I do wanna mention there is a possibility that Starlink in the future may eliminate that loophole by introducing something called the roam activation charge. And there's some evidence that they might try to do this. So there's a Help Center article that actually mentions and talks about the Rome activation charge. And I think the idea, even though it hasn't been implemented yet and we don't have any solid information, the future idea is that Starlink may charge you a small fee when reactivating a Rome service plan. So if you go that route where you cancel and then just reactivate as necessary, so you can basically have that free pause feature, they may charge you maybe a small $25 to $50 fee every time you reactivate your Rome plan. And that can add up quickly, especially if you're reactivating two or three times a year. So you can see how if they do implement that Rome activation charge, that would basically force you to pay this new standby mode fee because even a maximum of $60 a month for standby mode, if you never use your Starlink the entire year, is cheaper than a couple of those smaller activation charges. Starlink clearly doesn't want people canceling. They'd rather you pay $5 a month if you're not gonna be using your Starlink versus canceling altogether. And that's pretty obvious when you actually look at the Starlink app now. So if you go in to manage your service plan, you'll only find the options to change your service plan or enable standby mode. The cancel option is gone from the Starlink app. You actually have to go to the website and log in and cancel your service that way. So they're, they're trying to, I think, make it more difficult to cancel at first to see how that goes. And then if people are canceling to effectively do a free pause, then they might introduce this Rome activation charge to kind of uh, force or persuade you to pay that standby fee. So that's standby mode. That's what's happened with your free pause feature on Rome and priority service plans. I'll put some links in the description below to the Starlink website with various uh, help center articles and legal documents that kind of explain more of this if you're interested in digging into all the details of this new policy change. You can also leave me a comment below and I'll try to help you out the best I can, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this new change. 
Is standby mode something that's useful for you, something that you appreciate, or do you feel like a little bit of a bait and switch situation where Starlink has taken away a free feature that you think should remain? Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. See you in the next video.